Hi there guys, my name is Bizzleberry and I am a support grandmaster. This is a season 10 support guide for Soraka. I've done a Soraka guide before in season 9, but this is now a more updated version and in style of the previous support guides that I've done recently, like Lulu, Zyra, Senna, Nami, and many more. Uh, in these guides, if these are your first type of guides uh, of watching on my channel, then we go through everything, uh, runes, items, skill orders, abilities, and any little tricks and tips that I can give you along the way. At the moment, as I'm recording this, I am live streaming on twitch.tv slash bizzleberry, and I will be picking up questions or things related to Soraka if I miss them or if there's something that needs answering. If you are watching on YouTube, then please consider subscribing and uh, clicking the thumbs up and clicking the bell, of course. Got to click that bell. All right, let's jump straight into the runes. So this is the most core uh, build on Soraka. This is on patch 10.11 at the moment, season 10. Uh, Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band uh, are the two ones that you will never change. Now looking at the extra ones down here, Transcendence and Gathering Storm is possibly what you're going to be taking most likely no matter what. Uh, there are some other little options here though. So tr Celerity is really nice. That interacts with her passive and her Q. So you could use that in terms of getting extra movement speed there. That is fine to do. Absolute Focus is an, is an okay rune to take as well if you want to be a tiny bit more aggressive during the laning phase, but it falls off quite quickly. So generally between a Transcendence and a Celerity, depending if you want more movement speed. And the last rune here, Gathering Storm and Transcendence pair up pretty nicely as that's a mid-game power spike. Otherwise, if you want some more laning phase aggressiveness, then Scorch can be a good option too. But generally, I would advise Gathering Storm and Transcendence. Now we have two options here in the secondary runes. The primary one is Inspiration. There's lots of different viable options here. The most basic one is Biscuit Delivery with Cosmic Insight. But you could also take free boots, the magical footwear, if you think that you're going to be having an easier start to the laning phase and you could save a lot of money uh, by not having to pick up boots from the shop and also you get an extra 10 movement speed. So if you can and you feel like your laning phase isn't going to be too bad, try and lean and be a bit greedy towards these boots if possible. Stopwatch is a fine option too if you're worried about tower dives in the mid game. And with the approach velocity, that is getting buffed. Um, so any slows that you or enemies land in the lane, your Q is a slow. So you could use this approach velocity as well if you're looking to be a bit more aggressive in the laning phase. You could maybe pair the approach velocity up with Scorch and Absolute Focus in the Sorcery. Now if you're playing against a hard engage or you're worried about dying quickly in the laning phase, you can go into Resolve. And then your only options here really are bone plating and revitalize. Sorak has lots of heals, so revitalize is a nice buff there. But that's if you're scared in the laning phase. That's a good option here as well. I'm gonna revert this back over to boots and cosmic insight. Now in terms of runes, double adaptive force at the bottom here. And once again, always change depending on what you're playing against bot side, you could always be against a Syndra or a Heimerdinger or something like that AP wise on the bot side. So then you'd want to go into the magic resistance rune. Okay, we're going to jump into practice tool and go through items, abilities and, and summoners and all the other good stuff. Take the base Soraka skin, which is unfortunately quite ugly. If I can find it in time, she has so many skins. That's not the base Soraka skin. I can't find it. There we go, just in time. Gosh, she's got so many skins. Right, try and I like try and keep it towards the base skins, just so that new players are familiar with the abilities and spell effects that are going on. So some of the wise, um, actually, I wouldn't recommend doing ignite that I'm showcasing here. Um, generally, you want to last as long as possible in the landing phase. And Soraka is extremely squishy. So you'd be looking more towards, say, if your AD carry has heal, you'd be looking towards having a barrier. If your AD carry has exhaust, you'll be taking the heal. 
especially more so if you are running Revitalize on the Resolve secondary runes, as that will increase the Summoner heal value as well. Okay, you could also run Exhaust if there's a lot of Assassins on the enemy team. Um, that is a fine option too, but I personally generally run Barrier as much as possible, otherwise taking heal if my AD carrier hasn't got it. Now let's talk about items. So you will be taking a Spell Thief's Edge and two Half Potions going into laney phase. You'll be able to use your abilities quite often in the lane, so generating gold isn't an issue on Soraka. And the range is kind of generous as well. Then in the item builds, you're looking to rush Athens and Holy Grail as quickly as possible. As of 10.11, Soraka's base mana got improved. So you can actually, when you're going towards the Athens and Holy Grail, on a lot of enchanters, you wouldn't want to pick up more fairy charms because you would have mana issues. But Soraka generally hasn't got too bad of a mana, mana problems in lane. So you could greed for Fiendish Codex first item and then start heading towards the other components. The extra 10% cooldown reduction and the 35 ability power does scale quite nicely with some of the other spells that she has. The first item you're always looking towards the Thieves and Holy Grail. You should be looking to be really aggressive during the laning phase. And with the other enchanters as well, you're going to need to be paying attention to what your AD carry is in terms of choosing which other enchanter item to take here between either Ardent Senza or Redemption. So if you've got a heavy, um, if you've got a, a hyper carry, an AD carry that's auto hitting a lot, like a Vein or a Cogmore or a anything into that nature, like a Jinx, you'd be wanting to pick up the Athens, uh, the Ardent. Sorry, after you bought the purchased the Athens and Holy Grail. That is an absolute key item. Uh, you get a little bit of extra movement speed as well there, so helps out in getting out of those little those fights and positioning a little bit better. If you do not have an AD carry or anyone on your team that will benefit from an Ardent Sensor, then you want to go Redemption. Bear in mind you're also making sure that you always have control wards at all times. And then your third item can be pretty flexible. Just don't buy Locket because it only the shield, uh, the active shield only scales with bonus HP and Soraka won't be picking up much bonus HP at all. So the third item is you could finish off say, you know, the third item. So you would have the three healing items. That's probably the most likely chance of what's happening with your build. That you have a redemption, Athens and Holy Crow and an Ardent Sensor. But say if you don't need the Ardent Sensor, you can go into Knight's Vow, that is fine to do. You can also do Shrillias, you can do Twin Shadows if you want to catch people out. Um, you could also do Zonyas as well if you're worried about Assassins or at least picking up the Stopwatch. That's fine to do as well. And in terms of Boots, uh, Boots of Lucidity it works pretty nicely, especially with Transcendence. As any further cooldown reduction that you do pick up later on will then be converted into Ability Power. Otherwise, you can look to be a little bit more like tanky um, by taking like the Merc Treads or the Ninja Tabby. So those are the core. That's the core item build on Soraka. Um, there's not too much to explain, especially if you've had uh, any experience playing any of the enchanters. The item builds are very similar to something like Nami. Now let's talk about her abilities. So you, as you can imagine, as an Enchanter, she's got lots of healing in her kit. Uh, let's deactivate minions, and then let's get some levels in here. Oopsie-daisy. And let's get some target dummies down as well. Okay. So Soraka's passive, which we won't be able to showcase in the practice tool, unfortunately, is that Soraka gets a massive amount of movement speed towards allies that are low HP. The range on this is 2,500, but the range is like, to explain about 2,500 is about from where I'm standing to about the tower, roughly. It's quite a long range. So it can help you get towards a team fight if you're out of position quite nicely and can potentially save someone. As we don't have any allies on low HP, that's not going to be easy to... Ooh, actually, maybe. Maybe. I just had an idea. Maybe we can do... 
this. No. <laughs> of course, your allied d uh, dummies don't take damage. You just have to believe me. A good synergy, actually, with this salvation is it will your movement speed will increase when champions are below 40% HP. Um, that also works with your ultimate as well, which is a global. I might as well talk about the ultimate then with that interaction with the passive. Because if anyone's below 40% HP, you get that indicator. And your wish will heal by an extra 50% on anyone that's below 40%. So if you can see if you see those arrows flying out in the middle of a team fight, that's a good indication to, to then use your ultimate, which will heal everyone uh, on the map. Uh, that includes people that are in stasis. So say if there's someone that's zonyed on your team at ten percent health, then that will actually heal them when they're in that zonyas. So just a little tip there in case you weren't aware. So you can heal people that even that you can't target. Okay. Let's talk about now the basic abilities, the Q, W, and E. The Q um, has a few things going on with it. So it's a little bit of a delay on the hit. The further that it, the Q goes away from you, the slower the animation is. So as you can see, that's quite slow. If an enemy is on top of you, it happens pretty quickly, almost instantly. So you can use that decision to you know, choose who you're using your ability on, depending on the range of the of the, where they are. Okay, so another component to Soraka's Q um, will, when you land your Q on an enemy champion, Soraka gets a movement speed increase, and also it will slow the enemy champion. At the moment, it's max on five points. It is thirty percent. So it's you slow the enemy champion. And then you also get bonus movement speed for yourself. Also, when you land it onto an enemy champion as well, you then pick up this rejuvenation buff. The rejuvenation buff is part of the extra movement speed increase. And also it will give you some health over time. You can pass that rejuvenation buff with your W. Also, when you land, when you have the rejuvenation buff as well, App currently, as of 10.11, the the W, the heal would usually cost your maximum health in order to pass that on. If you have the rejuvenation buff, it doesn't cost any health at all, just mana. Also, it will then give them the rejuvenation buff as well. It passes it on. It, it doesn't remove the one that you have. It just gives them a copy of rejuvenation. So Q, and then you W over to an ally. And then the ally gets the rejuvenation buff as well. So they get the increased movement speed and the healing. So it's important when you land your Q to try and only heal your allies with your W when you land your Q. This is pretty important as well during the laning phase. Because otherwise you're going to be chugging down your health quite a lot. And you'll end up... You can't kill yourself by healing your allies. You can be put onto one HP, but you can't actually die from doing it. But you don't obviously want to be in a situation at any point in the game where you're going to kill yourself with, <laughs> or nearly kill yourself with your abilities. So the ideal is you're landing your Q and then you're Wing an ally. And then they also not only get your base heal, but they get the rejuvenation heal and the movement speed. And then finally, your E, your Equinox. Is an instant silence and once the silence the void zone disappears it roots any champion that is in that zone so you can link that up with your Q so ideally you land your Q the enemy is slowed and then they are slowed inside this zone so they're silence as long as possible and if they're unable to make it out of the zone then they're also rooted uh, this is great at interrupting channeled abilities um, it's great at um, interrupting any any assassins as well that are out on top of you. So say if Cassidin blink or any assassin blinks on top of you, you can instantly silence and then they have to like basically move out or choose to get rooted. So the most basic combo on Soraka is this Q and then E. Um, you can also use your Equinox as like a roadblock. Because say if you put it in front, say if you're really low on HP, um, the enemy will then have to choose to move into the zone 
and then they might get silenced at the end. So you kind of got to predict the enemy's movement speed, where they're going to be when this turns into a route. That's like a more advanced tool on Soraka. Also, one thing I like to do on Soraka is if you're struggling to land your Qs, so if you're missing a lot of Qs, um, not only just to generate gold, but also to generate mana flow band stacks, if you know the enemy jungler's not around, because then that's when you will need your silence, particularly, uh, just tap the enemy, get the 15 gold and the mana flow band stack. Um, it shaves off a little bit of mana effectively from using your E, and the damage is okay. So we've covered items, we've covered um, abilities and a couple of skill shots. We'll talk about the skill order. So in lane, you generally want to do three points in Q because your Q actually does a pretty decent amount of damage and also does an, uh, an okay amount of damage to minions as well. So if you're wanting to help push out the lane, then your Q will help push in the wave um, and it will get more points and it will do more damage. So it will help you um, harass more in the laning phase because you're looking just to harass as much as possible and land your Q as often as possible. Um, because if you just land one, say if you take some harassment but you land, manage to land one of your Qs, you get the rejuvenation buff and then you can then pass it on to an ally as well. So both of you and your teammate get healing. Apart from that, um, so yeah, three points in Q. You can do two if you're doing badly in the laning phase or if you can see that you're struggling in terms of landing your Qs on the enemy. And then, other than after that, you're maxing your W. It's the, the most core build on core spell on Soraka. You'll be using your W constantly during team fights and spam healing people. Once you get a bit low in the team fights, ideally, if you're having to W people quite early on, try and save your wish in your ultimate for as long as possible without it being too risky. Because remember that you're you'll heal them for an extra extra fifty percent amount if they're under forty percent HP. So if they're under that threshold, you actually heal them for more. So you don't want to necessarily pop your ultimate straight away. At the start, near the start of a fight, just try and ideally let people get a little bit lower. Uh, heal people with your W. Ideally with the rejuvenation buff on as well. And then pop people when, pop the ult once one or two people get below into that threshold area. So two or three points in Q. Max your W and then you max your E, your silence ability. And um, that becomes a really crucial um, ability in team fights in terms of causing like skill uh, short order rotations and messes people up quite a bit. And it can, pro can definitely protect, protect a few people uh, from dying. Just bear in mind Soraka is pretty squishy. Um, when you are playing Soraka, it is likely that the enemy will take Grievous Wounds, such as an Executioner's or a Melanomicon, that will reduce your healing by 40%. Um, there are also some other champion abilities like Varus's E, the Reign of Arrows, that will also leave Grievous Wounds on the floor. So you need to pay attention and, I and Ignite as well will also apply the Grievous Wound debuff. So ideally only heal people once that debuff is off if you can wait for it to come off as well. That's quite crucial during the laning phase. So if say like you, if someone is standing in the Varus E and the heal isn't urgent, wait for the Grievous Wounds for, to, for that to come off and then heal. So you always look at that little debuff. I knew this would come in handy. So once you see this debuff when they're on fire, ignite buff, ignite debuff, wait until that wears off, ideally, unless it's utterly urgent and they're very, very, very low on HP, then you have to heal them. If some cases though, um, you'll find that the enemy won't pick up Grievous Wounds because of reasons. And also uh, Soraka, because the enemy should be picking up Grievous Wounds, it will make them come off their main build sometimes. Like an AD carry wouldn't usually want to pick up an Executioner's very early into landing phase, and it costs 800 gold, and that takes 800 gold away from their core item, like an Infinity Edge. So Soraka, just natural power anyway, just her presence being in the game, forcing people to go into different build orders, is really powerful um, and, and can delay the game by an extra three three or four minutes just because of that the gold needed just for the execution is for early on to the game and if they choose to ignore it you can punish them quite a bit because soraka's heals are really really good um if there's no debuff being placed 
Other than that, um, matchups that you might be uh, be scared of is any matchup where you're not able to land your Q. Um, your Q is just so vital to the laning phase where it doesn't matter if you are down about 50% HP. As long as you land one of those Qs and get the rejuvenation buff and to self-heal yourself and your ally with your W, it's massive. So any like double range, uh, really long range champions on the bot lane, you will, you will struggle. Or champions that can pick up executioners and it's naturally in their build path extremely early like Senna, you might struggle there as well. So double siege, double poke champions like, say, for example, a Caitlyn uh, AD carry with a Zarif support, you would struggle a lot because you would barely be able to get into your star core range before you get harassed down. So those are the kind of matchups you're looking to avoid. Uh, right now, apart from that, I regard her as tier one right now. So she is very good into every single other matchup right that up, 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 other than that double poke. Uh, if you're against like the tank, for example, you can out often out sustain them just by landing your rejuvenation buff um, and delaying the fights as long as possible with your silence. And you will also have something like a summoner heal or a barrier uh, to help keep you alive in the laning phase, because that's why you want the barrier, you want the heal, summoner heal, or an exhaust to make sure that you are healthy um, no matter what. The I've got loads of actually Soraka. <laughs> uh, Guys, uh, videos, gameplay videos on my my YouTube channel. Feel free to check any of those out. Um, there's a lot of cases where if you see that I have the summoner barrier, I use that very often in order to make them think that they're going to get a kill on me. Um, then barrier, and then they they then lose their focus on me because they're expecting me to die on that hit, uh, and that just drags out the fight even longer to your favor. So she's very good at out sustaining uh, enemy champions throughout the entire game. Um, mid game onwards you'll be extremely vulnerable to assassins so that's why I pinpointed and, and identified that you might want to pick up a Zonia's or a stopwatch mid game onwards but hopefully this guide helps you out I've got loads of other support guides on YouTube as well if you wish to check them out uh, lots of Grandmaster Master, High Diamond, ELO uh, support, solo queue gameplay of me playing lots of different supports if you're interested um, if this is the kind of content you like um, Give me a thumbs up, subscribe on YouTube, click my bell. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments section uh, what kind of champion you want next. Uh, as I said, I'll be covering tanks in the next patch, 10.12. But if there's any enchanters or mages that you want me to do before then, uh, do let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably try and cover it before the next patch comes out. Uh, if you are watching as well from twitch.tv slash bizzleberry, consider following and... Uh, yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the content. Been lots of content lately. Take care, guys, and stay safe.